Hi, I'm Kaylee Whalen, a Guatemalan American travel vlogger and ethnographer. And I'm here to talk about Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead in Guatemala, and how the tradition is different from Dia de Muertos in Mexico. Day of the Dead is celebrated on November 1st, or All Saints Day, in the Catholic calendar. And in both Mexico and Guatemala, it is a day to celebrate dead loved ones and ancestors. It's a day that it is believed the barrier between the spirit world and the mortal world is become so thin, you may be able to contact your dead family and loved ones or have them visit you here. But how do each of these traditions in the two countries differ from each other? And what do the giant kites or barriletes gigantes have to do with it all? Well, stay tuned to learn more. In this video, I'll be focusing on four of the most famous traditions in the Guatemalan Dia de Muertos celebrations. First, I'll talk about the famous giant kite festivals, or barriletes gigantes, which take place in Sumpango and Santiago Zacatepeques. Combined, both of the large festivals draw over 100,000 people each year. Then I'll talk about traditional Dia de Muertos foods, including Guatemala's famous salad used for Dia de Muertos, the fiambre. I'll touch on ways Guatemalans honor dead loved ones in cemeteries and on home altars known as ofrendas, which have many similarities to Mexican ofrendas with some differences, which I'll explain. After that, I'll talk about a few Mexican traditions, specifically sugar skulls, calaveras, and the Katrina figure, and if these have any overlap with Guatemalan traditions. I'll also touch on some regional Guatemalan traditions, specifically the horse racing that's held in the Mam Maya traditional lands of Todos Santos. It's a lot to cover and I'll keep it brief, so stay tuned. So one year ago in 2021, I traveled to Guatemala to learn more about Dia de Muertos and visit my grandparents' grave in Weiwei Tenango, Guatemala. So most of the footage you'll see was shot then. Since then, I've collected additional footage from the kite festivals to add to the video in addition to additional research I did after the visit to the cemetery. I'm in Weiwei Tenango Cemetery. This is my grandparents' grave. I came here as soon as the cemetery was open. Because of COVID, there wasn't the big traditional party in the cemetery that there would be. Actually, the cemeteries were closed on All Souls Day and All Saints Day, uh, Day of the Dead. Missing being part of those celebrations, which I had hoped, uh, has been difficult. Just to talk a bit about the origins of Day of the Dead and why it's so important so here in Guatemala, Day of the Dead has a rich history going back to Mayan traditions, celebrating death and the spirits after death that can come back to visit the material world, the Day of the Dead, and that we honor those who've died and celebrate their memories rather than mourn so that for one day a year they can come back and we can dance and celebrate with them. I want to state now that I'm not claiming indigenous heritage. Uh, while I do say that Day of the Dead has Mayan roots, at this point it is a blend of Catholic and Spanish and indigenous traditions. And we carry on honoring the dead in also a blend of the Catholic tradition of All Souls Day and All Saints Day. Kites are very important to Guatemalan traditions. It goes back to Mayan beliefs that kites could help the people reach the ancestors, that the kite would be a line up to the spirit world directing the spirits home for a day of the dead. And this tradition, yes, later got blended with Catholic All Saints Day and is celebrated on November 1st for that reason. But these kites 
They are in octagonal shapes. I'll put some up on film. And these octagonal shapes are representing the sun, the corona of the sun, as well as the four cardinal directions that the Mayans uh, believed in. I mean, for us, north, south, east, west. But it was very important to honor these cardinal directions in Mayan uh, theology and beliefs. And these kites reach up to the heavens, reach up to the spirits. And little kids fly kites in their neighborhoods. And at least I got to see a lot of like handmade, homemade kites flying as I was driving through the mountains or rather riding in a bus through the mountains um, to come here. But in two cities uh, that have a large Mayan indigenous population, they go over the top with the kite tradition. They make massive kites that can be up to two stories tall and they're beautifully ornately painted and some are far too heavy to fly. But those that can fly uh, may take a team of a dozen or a couple dozen people to launch into the air to honor the spirits on that day. Cemeteries were closed on Day of the Dead and the kite festival was for people flying the kites only and otherwise televised. So I loved seeing the video and I plan to come back one year when it will be possible to see it in person because those kites were massive. Oh my God, I'd love to see them. I wanna talk more about the messages and images on the kites themselves. In the older traditions, the messages on the kites were intended to communicate with the spirits of the dead. But over time, many of the messages on the kites have taken on a political and or secular theme. This includes themes around injustices faced around the indigenous and working class populations of Guatemala under colonization and the Guatemalan government, including US interventions in Guatemala. I have an entirely separate video about that, which I hope you'll check out. Kites might also carry messages about women's rights and the rights of other minorities, messages about cultural resistance and survival, images of dead loved ones, and celebrations of hope for the future. Finally, one other thing to add is that recently the Guatemalan government has officially designated the festivals de Barriletes Gigantes as part of Guatemala's national heritage, which will help protect these festivals for the future, which is a victory for the indigenous peoples of Guatemala. Probably the second most famous Guatemalan tradition is the Fiambre, a salad really only eaten one day a year, November 1st, Dia de Muertos. It's typically made to feed an entire extended family who might be celebrating together, perhaps in a cemetery. As such, it's massive, piled high with dozens of ingredients to please everybody. People pickle vegetables ahead of time, which are a major component of the dish, in addition to cold cut meats, cheeses, and other vegetables. Often you'll see a radish carved like a flower in the middle. My friend, Anne, who helped me with the script and research in this video, celebrates Dia de Muertos with a vegan fiambre dish, so that is possible. Different regions of families have their own recipes for fiambre, and one you might see is the fiambre rojo, or red fiambre, which is made with beets. For those with a sweet tooth, another traditional Guatemalan Dia de Muertos tradition is the dulce de ayote, a candied winter squash dish. I have some of the ingredients here right in front of me including cinnamon, a mix of cloves and allspice, as well as a hardened brown sugar known as pilanchillo or panela or several other names. Finally, there's pan de muerto or bread of the dead, which is very common in both Mexico and Guatemala. In Mexican traditions, this is one of the major offerings of food you might leave for the dead spirits to eat when they visit you on Dia de Muertos in addition to other dishes they may have enjoyed in life. Leaving food offerings is less common in Guatemala, 
but the bread is still popularly enjoyed on Dia de Muertos, and it's very similar to the Mexican Pan de Muerto, with some regional variations. The place you leave offerings for the dead in Guatemala is typically at the graveyard, especially flowers, although you may also have a home altar or a frenda. This ofrenda is dedicated to my grandparents. The flowers, especially Flor de Muerto, are very traditionally Guatemalan. I did leave food offerings to my grandparents, things they enjoyed in life, including tortillas and cooking plantains and the pan de muerto and pumpkin. But you might also notice the sugar skull vase, which again is more traditionally Mexican, and I'll return to sugar skulls later. It came with the flowers. But first, let's talk about flores de muertos, or flowers of the dead. These are orange marigolds, also known as Mexican marigolds, although they do grow in Guatemala. In Guatemala, if you had a loved one die in the last year, you might leave a bouquet of flores de muertos outside your windowsill. This lets your local community know that you lost a dear loved one in the last year, and this means people will come around to comfort you and honor their memory with you, which I think is a pretty great tradition. You'll also generally see these flowers mixed in with others at graveyards and other offerings. As I mentioned, there are also some regionally specific traditions, and right near my grandparents' grave in Huehuetenango, is the province of Todos Santos, the ancestral home of the Maya people, whom the, to this day remain the primary inhabitants. Todos Santos is famous for their horse races held during Dia de Muertos, which have a bit of a dark history. Legend goes that these horse races started as a protest to Spanish oppression. The Spanish, which saw indigenous Maya people as culturally inferior, which, according to one story, claimed the Maya people didn't know how to ride horses. Well, some Maya people, after a few drinks at a bar, stole some Spanish horses in protest and raced off with them. This origin explains, or perhaps justifies, why these horse races are typically performed along with heavy drinking, and also why the people riding the horses wear the traditional clothes based on the costumes that the Spanish colonizers forced them to wear to mark them as Maya. Because of the drinking, there's been some criticism around the safety and ethics of these horse races, and the Spanish government officially banned liquor sales around that time. But in stern defiance, the chaotic party atmosphere of the races continue. While I did visit Todos Santos a few months before Dia de Muertos with the local Maya guide, I would give travelers the advice that the region is not set up for heavy tourism and the local peoples are fighting hard to preserve their culture. So I would think hard about going and perhaps recommend going to a kite festival such as in Sumpongo instead. But if you do wish to go to Todos Santos, educate yourself about the local Mam Maya people and be respectful. Regarding sugar skulls, they're one of the most recognizable aspects of the Mexican tradition, but they do not play a major role in most Guatemalan traditions. That said, Guatemalan towns, which are closer to the Mexican border, tend to have a mixture of beliefs. And in Huehuetenango, while visiting my grandparents' grave, I did see sugar skull decorations. In the small town of San Jose in Petén, Guatemala, there's also a tradition of La Procesión de la Calavera, the procession of skulls, which involves honoring the skulls of the three founding ancestors of the town who belong to the Maya Itza ethnic group. It is a celebration of the town's historic resistance to Spanish colonization and the importance of preserving traditional beliefs. So you will see skulls as part of Dia de Muertos traditions specifically in this town. One other thing is I brought some of the traditional Mexican cut paper. Oh my God, it's flapping in the wind. That they display over the ofrendas. This is the Katrina figure, which is very famous in Mexican Day of the Dead celebrations. She started as kind of a parody illustration of a 
Mexican woman kind of looking like a skeleton who is trying to put on airs and dress in a Spanish colonial style and was a parody of the Spanish kind of colonialism, uh, but has now become a big part of the celebration as I explored in another video. Regarding the Katrina figure and women and people who might paint their faces to look like her, she is definitely Mexican in origin. Nevertheless, Katrina and painted skull faces have found their way into pan-Latino Dia de Muertos traditions, especially practiced by immigrants in the United States. I particularly enjoy how the Katrina figure originated as a political cartoon in protest against the forces of colonization. So I feel if you're going to incorporate Katrina and painted skull faces into your traditions, it's important to do so in a way that resists colonialism rather than reinforcing it through co-opting other people's cultures. If you're Mexican or Latino and have other thoughts about the politics of sugar skulls, Katrina, and painted faces for Dia de Muertos, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I just wanted to talk about some hard truths about being an immigrant, about the Latina, Latina experience in the United States, about how American pressure to assimilate, which my grandmother and grandfather felt as people from Guatemala and Puerto Rico, living in New York City, raising my mother in Queens, how this pressure to assimilate often leads to our beliefs and traditions not being passed down. So I, I've asked my mom a few times what she knows about Day of the Dead in Guatemala, and she just doesn't have a knowledge really of it. She did remember a bit about the fiambre salad, and she did remember a bit about kites that her parents told her about. I was raised Catholic, um, but Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertos, was not part of how I celebrated. I was taught death was something scary. I internalized death is about mourning, about sadness, and what is unique and wonderful about many of the Latin American traditions is that death is something that is something to celebrate your ancestors, their spirits after they die. And that's why Dia de Muertos exists. It's a day of festivities. And that's one thing that is so beautiful about Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead in both Guatemala and Mexico is that it is a celebration of life. It is a celebration of children and family and ancestors all being together and not noting that not being afraid of death, that we can live life and honor the dead and live joyously knowing that for one day a year, we can visit them and they can visit us. If you got something from this, please take a moment to like and subscribe. I am so grateful to everyone who shares, likes, subscribes, and supports me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Kaylee Whalen. It's the place to be. Thank you for joining me.